So you remember in the past we did, um, we did two really big numbers in particular in the past. We did uh, Graham's number and tree three, right? So if you remember, tree three was this number that was, that was so big that, you know, even just to prove that it was finite, there just wasn't enough time left in the universe to do that. You would have a, a universe would reset itself before you ever got to complete the proof. It, 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 it's just stupid. It's, it's just, it, you can't even picture it. And Graham's number was so big that if you thought about it, your head would collapse to, to form a black hole. So these are two really crazy numbers, but what I really want to talk about today is kind of the sort of crazy of crazy. I want to talk about a number which combines both, and that's tree of Graham's number. I'm worried the universe is going to collapse on us. <laughs> well, you know, we need, we need to worry about that. As you might remember from, from those original videos, both tree three and Graham's number, they, they both arise as, in sort of a sequence. Particularly, let's, let's remind ourselves what, where, where Graham's number came from sort of very briefly. To get to Graham's number, we started out with something which I'll call G1, which was three, arrow, 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 three, right? Now this was a really big number. Now just to remind you what these arrows were, if I have three arrow three, that just means three to the three. It's a fancy way of writing three to the power three, which is of course 27. If I take a double arrow, well that just means doing a repetition of the single arrow, in this case three times. So that would be three arrow, three arrow three, which is three to the arrow 27, which is about 7.6 trillion, I think it is. Okay, and then if you had three arrows, well that's just repeated double arrows, okay. So that's just repeat repetition of the double arrow. So that's three to the three to the, to the three, which is again, three double arrows, 7.6 trillion, which is basically a power tower of three. So three to the three to the three to the three and so on. That is 7.6 trillion high. Okay, so this is just stupidly big numbers. And actually the first sort of rung on the ladder of, of Graham's, Graham's ladder, the Graham's sequence, is actually has four arrows. So it's a repetition of three arrows. So this is the first point on Graham's sequence, but then you go up, right? Graham, what Ron Graham told us to do was actually to sort of build this sequence up. You would then go to G2, where the number of arrows itself was already this huge number, okay? So you actually now have G1 arrows. And the arrows, as you can see from this, make numbers really, really big. So actually now when we start putting really big numbers in the number of arrows, we get crazy big. And he carried on with this sequence until he got to G64, which was this Graham's number. So you have this sequence one, you start with this G1, G2, until all the way up to G64. And you can carry on, right? This defines a sequence which you could call GN, which is basically related to the one before by taking the number of arrows that you had before. So you relate it like that. So this defines a sequence. The tree, trees also gave us a sequence. Now, if you remember from that video, the trees are basically, this is this idea of you, you play a game with a, with a finite number of seeds, different types of seeds, and you try to grow trees. And, and the idea is how long can this game go on for? So if you have one type of seed, then the game can last a maximum of basically one go. So tree one is one. Tree two, so if you have two different seeds, is, um, is three. And then if you have three different seeds, then the game literally goes on for, can potentially go on for absolutely ages. This number is massive. Okay, it's a really, really big number. Like, it's actually bigger than Graham's number, that's what I told you. Okay, so we're gonna think a bit more about that. But this is a truly, truly gargantuan number. And, but of course you could carry on with this sequence. You could try tree four, tree five, tree six, in general some tree N. And you could even think, of course, about tree of Graham's number. So that's what we want to think about. Now, we have two sequences here, right? And the real question I want to ask is, is which sequence is better? So let's ask this question. Let me, let me write down. So we've got these two sequences. We've got tree of N and we've got G of N. So we've got the trees and the Gs, okay? And we can build this number tree of Graham's number, right? Which is basically tree of g of 64. But I could also think about going the other way around. What do I mean by that? I mean, do the trees first and then do the g's. So in other words, I'm going to start playing the game of trees first and then I climb Graham's ladder. So what do I mean by that? I mean, take tree, in this case, of 64, and then 
evaluate that in Graham sequence. So I'm doing it the other way around. So here I'm climbing Graham's ladder first, 64 rungs, and then I'm playing the game of trees. Here I'm playing the game of trees with 64 you know, sort of seeds, and then I'm climbing Graham's ladder. So which of these numbers is bigger? Okay, which is bigger? Oh, I, can I have a guess? Go on. I got the impression from you in the previous videos that trees are more powerful. So I'm going to say that one's bigger. But that's got tree in it as well. Yeah, but it's you're giving the tree less juice there. You're only giving okay. the tree 64 juice, and there you're giving the tree Graham's number juice. I think that's a beautiful way to put it, actually, Brady. And, and, and you are right. OK, but let's, let's actually explore this a, li a little bit more. Let's do it with a much simpler, simpler um, pair of sequences, which are basically just powers. So I can imagine a sequence where p to the n is 2 to the n. So I basically take, take the um, 2 to the, to the power of whatever number I'm interested in. And quadratics. OK, so I basically take n. If you give me n, I give you n squared. So these are two different sequences. The, neither of these are anywhere near as powerful as tree or g. But they'll, they'll illustrate the point. Now, as you would put it, in this case, the exponent, you know, this one, has more juice, okay? This is more powerful than a quadratic. Exponents grow more quickly than quadratics. In this case, we can study and ask, which is it better to do first or last, okay? Which is going to take us to the bigger place? Let's look at this and let's, let's start with maybe n equals 1, okay? So if we do q first, we take the quadratic of 1, okay? That gives me 1. And then I have to do p, which is going to take me to 2, okay? So I'll get 2. If I do it the other way around, so I'm going to start with 1, I then need to take its power, that's going to give me 2, and then I need to take the quadratic, so that's going to give me 4. Okay, so you can see if I do for n equals 1, actually, doing this guy last actually seems to win. Okay, that doesn't feel quite right. Let's try a bigger number, let's do n equals 3. So if I, t I take the quadratic first, that takes 3 to 9, and then I take the power, okay, that, takes, that gets me to 2 to the 9, which I think is 512, quite a big number. Now let's do it the other way around. Okay, so we start off with 3. We take the power, so that's 2 to the 3, which is 8. And then we take the quadratic, 64. So you can see here, the minute we went to a slightly bigger number, actually, it was indeed advantageous to do the big guy last. Okay, and actually, as long as you take n bigger than 2, it's always going to be better to do the big guy last. So it is, it is true, you're right, Brady. The big guy, the most powerful guy, is the one that you should do last if you want to get to really, really big numbers. So now let's go back to tree and g. Now, you, your intuition says that tree is bigger. It's correct. But what's the mathematical way of, of sort of, of measuring that? Is there a mathematical measure for that sort of thing, for how fast a sequence grows, okay? Does, you know, is there a measure for how fast tree n grows? Is there a measure for how fast g n grows? Or any other sequence, okay? And there is. And... For these growing sequences, the thing that we use is, is something called the, the fast-grown hierarchies. So we're going to start off with, a, very, with a, a, a sort of function that does grow, but it doesn't grow very quickly. OK, so we really, really start off with basics. And that's the successor function. So this is a very simple guy. It basically just says, take n and go to the next one along. All right? Counting. It's counting, basically. It's the first thing you learn at school, right? So 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4, and so on, right? So it's, growing fun it's a growing sequence. It just doesn't grow very quickly, OK? But this, is, this successor function is, is the basic for, basis for all the, it's the seed for all these fast-growing hierarchies. OK, so I want something that grows. Obviously, this doesn't grow as fast as tree or g. I think we can agree that, right? <laughs> OK, so let's try and get something that grows a bit faster. But this is the seed for everything else. So what can grow a bit faster? Well, you define f of 1. OK, which is defined as doing this guy n times. OK, so I'm going to do f lots of times. In fact, I'm going to do it n times on n. OK, so what is this? So another way of writing that is just f 0 to the n of n. So what am I really doing here? I'm, doing, I'm adding 1 to n n times. Where's that going to take me? That's going to take me to 2n, 2 times n. Yeah, I'm adding n to n to I'm adding one to n n times. That's going to take me to two n. Okay, so you can see this is already growing more quickly. This one was just adding one each time. This one is now doubling. It's not a much faster growing function, but it is a faster growing function than the successor guy. Okay, and we've done it by we've built it from that successor seed. Okay, so let's carry on. Let's try f two. We're going to define it the same way. We're basically going to say do f1 n times on n. 
Okay? So what's this going to give me? Well, this is basically saying multiply by 2 n times. So that's going to give me 2 to the n times n. So now we've gone to an exponent. Okay, so we've gone from successes to multiplication, so it's like by doing repeating, repeated succession, to exponentiation by doing repeated multiplication. I can carry on, okay? What's the next guy? Well, that basically says do this an n number of times. So what's that going to give me? Well, I don't want to write it down. This is going to be something that's more like the double arrow. This is actually going to grow more quickly than that guy. Slightly, but it's the same, similar sort of, you know, sort of growth rate, but, but it's slightly more, more quickly than that. Okay, so this is what we call tetration. So you've got successor, multiplication, exponentiation. This is now tetration. And I could carry this on. Okay, I could just carry on, defining it in the same way by repetition of the one before. Next one would be pentation, um, hexation, and so on, and so on and so forth. Okay? And I could do loads of these, right? And I could do a whole time, one for every integer, right? All the way up. Okay, great. Now, this gives me a hierarchy for, for uh, this gives me a measure for how fast functions grow. I can measure them against these guys. So you okay. could have f 100. F of 100, f of a Google, f, 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 of, f of Graham's number, even, right? Okay? And my question is, is do these numbers grow faster? Or, or, which, where, where, does, where does the G sequence and the tree sequence appear in this, in this hierarchy? Is it, is it faster than some of them and not others? You know? Okay. What do you think? I don't know. You've got a cheeky smile. So I think you're about, I think you're about to pull something on me here. I, I don't know. I mean, presumably, because this F thing is in, infinite, could, could just keeps growing, it must get to a point at some point where I can use it to... So that's a good point. So it's certainly true that for a given value of n, so if I put, say, you know, I don't know, some large value of n in here, I could get a number that was bigger than Graham's number. But that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, do these sequences, do any of them grow more quickly than Graham's sequence or the tree sequence? So for the same value of n, are they going to give me bigger numbers? I feel like you must be able to get there because, because the, tr the, the way tree works and the way Graham works is like set in stone. Whereas this thing you can just keep making bigger and bigger until you okay. until it, it's fit for purpose. The answer is no. None of these, even if I carried on all the way up for, through all the integers, through all the natural numbers, there's never going to be a sequence that's as fast as either G, the G sequence, or the tree sequence. They're both faster. So they're both of the tree and the G, they grow quicker than any of these. Any of these. And that's like, whoa, that's <laughs> what am I going to do now? Okay, so how can I measure them? Well, the problem is, is that you're just dealing with finite, okay? Look at what we have here. What have we built up here? So I kind of need, I think I need another, yeah, another oh, sheet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can see with that, with that sequence of, of functions, I had f0, f1, f2, right? They all had an index 0, next one was 1, next one was 2, and 3, and so on, right? And in principle, I could have had any, any natural number, okay? Arbitrarily large. But I was restricted to the natural numbers, okay? I can go one beyond. I can go to infinity. What comes after these numbers? Well, there's also something important to distinguish about these numbers, is that they had an order, okay? There was, they, they, they were, you know, I have a notion of hierarchy. F0 doesn't grow as fast as F1, doesn't grow as fast as F2, and so on. The, the indices were important that they, they, they came in order. So you can really think of these numbers, these indices, as more like ordinals rather than cardinal numbers. Cardinal numbers tell you how much. Ordinal numbers add a bit of order to that. They add, you know, it's first, second, third, and so on. Once you've, you know, you've gone all the way through the natural numbers, where's, where do you go next? Well, infinity, right? So I can talk about infinity, which I, just, I write as the ordinal infinity. I write as an omega. And that's basically defined as the thing that comes after all the others, all these, all these finite ordinals. The thing that comes after is ordinal infinity. So that gives me a way to climb a bit higher. So I'm going to define a new type of function, okay, that's labeled by this guy. Now, how am I going to do that? So I'm just going to draw some of the f's that we've already, already created. Okay, so let me just draw a few of them. So f1 of 1, okay, f1 of 2, f2 of 1, f2 of 2. Okay, so here are some of the some of the f's that we've we could carry on right in, in all directions. If we Where you've to. put an integer in the in the place of the n. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm actually going to look at their values now. Yeah. Okay, so you know, if I go along this way, I, I'm I'm sort of changing the argument, increasing the argument. If I go this way, I'm increasing the index. 
Okay, so let's just plug in some values for what these guys are. This is two, four, this is six. So indeed, I, I grow as I grow that way. That was, our, that was our doubling. So this guy is two, this guy is eight, this guy is 24, this guy is two, this guy is 2048, bigger number. This next guy, I'm not gonna write it out because it has 121 million digits. Wow. This that, guy is huge. That escalated quickly. That, that did, that did escalate quickly. As, as, uh, what's his name, Ron, Ron what's it? What's it? I don't remember his name now. Yeah. Okay, so, so this- Ron Burgundy. This, Ron Burgundy, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this, this has gone out of control quite quickly. The amazing thing is, you're only at F3 here. Yeah, I know. That escalated really quickly. F can go like yeah, to yeah. the millions, and you still say we're nowhere near the power we need to deal with. Graham's number and very very true, right? But let but let's let but what I want to do is I want to create create an F, so like, which I'm going to label with omega, that grows more quickly than anything that's gone before. So how do I do that? Okay, well what's the quickest way I can grow in this picture? If I start out over here, what's the quickest way to grow? S straight along the diagonal. Yeah, yeah. Right? You go yeah. straight along if you go this yeah. way, you get well look in two steps, you're suddenly at 121 million digits. If I went to the next step and I went to F4 of four. Then I think this guy's somewhere between 10 three arrows four and 10 <laughs> three arrows five. It's in, it's in that interval. Okay, so, so going along the diagonal gets you really big really quickly. In fact, it's much more fast growing than anything that went before. Okay, so that's what we're gonna call F omega. Something, the, basically the guy that picks out the growth along the diagonal. So we can define that. So we just write that as F of omega of N, we're gonna define as f of n of n. That's basically saying pick out the diagonal. So this would be the first position, second, third, already at 121 million digits, fourth, already at this stupidness. All the way down there, we're just gonna get crazy. We're gonna get a really, really fast growing function. Okay, now what kind of function is, is this gonna look like? Well, actually, you can show that this is kind of generally gonna be greater than something that goes like this, where you've got n minus one arrows. So this is like kind of building up the arrows, which might sound like something that we've done before, which was how we built Graham's number. It built up the arrows. You know, the index kind of went on the arrow, which made you get really, really big. That's why these other functions, these, these, these guys, were, ne were never able to do as well as Graham, okay? Because they weren't really hitting the index on the arrow. Okay, the arrow, putting it on the arrow makes it grow much more quickly. So this guy's doing it, it's, it's doing much better, okay? We can talk about a next ordinal, the one after omega. Okay, the one after infinity, that's kind of weird. I'm just gonna call it omega plus one, right? Now, you might say, well, what, what, what on earth is that? That's clearly nonsense, right? You're talking about infinity plus one. Well, isn't infinity plus one just infinity? That's not really true when you're talking about ordinals, depending on how you define it. What I really mean by this, I mean the thing that comes after what went before, what comes after omega, okay? So, so by definition, it's not the same thing. Okay, you can't really do that with the cardinals, but you can with ordinals because the order matters. Okay, so I can quite reliably talk about something that, is, that just comes after this, this ordinal infinity. It's the next one along. How do I get that day? Well, I already know how to add one to my sequence of fast growing functions. I just do it the usual way, right? I do f of omega plus one is just an application of this guy n times. Okay, so it's f of omega n, n. Now this is starting to terrify me now because look how fast this guy grew. This was, this was, this was growing with, with putting at Macy index indices going on the arrows. This guy has just gone off on one now. This is even faster than that. This is, this is mad. I don't even want to, I think you can, you can uh, relate this to these Conway chains, but um, I, I don't even want to go there about what, how big this is growing. But I don't need to stop. Okay, I could carry on, right? I could carry on. I could just go omega plus two and so on, right? I could keep going, I could keep defining these functions this way, right? Eventually, I would run out of things to add, but what do I do then? Well, I just add omega, okay? So I would define an omega. This, the limit of this, I would then add something on top of that, which was this, which I call omega two. And just kind of next level of ordinals. Okay, but I don't need to stop then, I can carry on. I can do omega two plus one. And all the while, I'm defining new functions this way, okay? Omega, omega two plus two, right? and keep going. Until eventually I run out of finite numbers to add and then I just say, well, the next one is gonna be omega two plus omega, which I'm gonna call omega times three. Okay, but now look what I've got. So all the while I have functions that are coming along for the ride that are just going mad, right? Now, so what's next? Okay, 
So, so look what I've built now. I've managed to get, well, there's like an omega times one, which is just omega. I've also got an omega times two and omega times three. Okay, so I can start building this sequence up as well. Okay, just by doing these, these repeated additions. Okay, well, eventually I'm gonna run out. What do I do then? Well, I say the next one along is omega times omega, which is omega squared. Okay, so I can talk about a function which is growing like f of omega squared, which is, I, I, wow, I don't even know what it is, right? It's mad. It's just gonna be something crazy. I can carry on building these omegas. Omega to the omega. Omega to the omega to the omega. Omega to the omega to the omega to the omega. Da, 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 until I run out. Well, what do I do then? Okay, well then there's another ordinal which you call epsilon naught, which is kind of like an ordinal infinity that's just, whoa, it's just way out there, way bigger than this guy, way bigger than any of these. And there's a, there's an, there's a growing function which is labeled by that as well. It doesn't even bear thinking about how fast that grows. Okay, you can carry on. There's a whole system of that. You can play with, this, play with this sort of technology all the way. You have epsilon, you can define epsilon naught, you can build up more and more epsilon one. You can even start talking about epsilon with an index which is epsilon naught itself. And then you can have another index which is epsilon epsilon naught. And you can grow, 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 grow. Your next thing is, is called, well, the next one is called, sorry, uh, a zeta number. And then there's an eta number. And then eventually you just keep going and you use these, these things called Veblen hierarchies and, and all this. And then eventually you get to a point where you've got something which is just off the scale, massive ordinal, which is called gamma zero. It's called the Pfefferman shoot ordinal. It's the largest thing that you can create using these kind of recursion methods and this thing called Veblen hierarchy, which we won't go into. And the point is, is Fs that can come along for the ride. Does it even bear thinking about what F of gamma zero grows like? Okay. This is a crazily fast growing function, right? I mean, look, whoa, just, it, it, it was so far away. We didn't, we didn't even bother to describe it, right? Okay. So back to the million dollar question. Well, the tree three dollar question. Right? Okay, where does, where does the G sequence, the Graham sequence, and the tree sequence lie in all of this? So what, what F, what function do, do we build that's going to keep pace with tree? Exactly. Which, which of these Fs can keep pace with either G or tree? Okay, let me tell you. Let's do a G first. G we can handle, okay? G doesn't grow as fast as F omega plus one. It doesn't grow as fast as that. You can kind of see why, right? Already at f of omega, we're starting to see the, the sort of index appearing on the arrows, which is kind of like how Graham's number is built. Okay, so Graham's sequence um, grows, doesn't grow any faster than this guy. Okay, what about tree? <sighs> tree grows faster than this. It grows faster. It even grows faster than this guy. Tree grows faster than this. So none of these guys can handle tree. The tree sequence grows faster than all of them. Now, you can go beyond gamma zero if you want to. It all gets really quite messy, so we're not gonna go there. It's safe to say that tree is, is off the scale fast growing, even faster than this guy, whereas we could handle G. So the answer to the original question was that, yes, indeed, tree does have a lot more juice than G. So tree of Graham's number is bigger than Graham of tree, essentially. If you'd like some more from this interview, or maybe you'd like to watch some more videos about really big numbers, or you'd like to learn more about trees, check out the links on the screen and down in the video description. There's some stuff there we'd love you to see.